tired, anxious applicants waiting for their turn, almost a daily scene at passport offices. The Nigerian Immigration Service says its new approach will cut turnaround time, eliminate identity theft, middlemen, and other activities discrediting and slowing the passport application process. In Lagos, a Kui office of the service is already issuing the new passport with Alausa now on board. These officials are looking at the big picture, running a test of how much of waiting time will be eliminated. They run the test, creating a new passport for their guest, the representative of the Lagos State Government. For those that are waiting, you know, to renew their passports, I think it's um, an appropriate time now for you to get the e-passport, the new enhanced e-passport, because we had the e-passport before, but now it's, it's enhanced. And all those qualities that were reeled out by the representative of the CJ, I think should really be comforti I mean, comforting for, for us. The new passport comes bearing promises of strictly online-based payment, tracking of application, better security features, among other qualities designed to ensure transparency. But applicants must have a national identification number. Now we don't have identity problems with this passport because everything about you is embedded on your passport and no one can steal your identity. Then lastly, this saves Nigerians abroad from going to and fro to the embassy. A lot of times people will tell you, oh, they find it difficult leaving their jobs to go to the embassy for passport. The 10-year validity is for people who travel a lot, frequent travelers. We have a lot of Nigerians who have complained that their passports fill up on time. The new passport had earlier been launched in Abuja and Lagos with only the headquarters and Ikoi office issuing the document. The service promises a gradual rollout to ensure seamless transition to the new platform. Daridu, Channel Television News. So the next issue on the burner is what you can see on the screen right now. This new visa regime uh, that the president announced while in Egypt. That, you know, this visa on arrival for every African uh, with a valid passport. passport of any African nation. And really, uh, well, on the one hand, it's good. Uh, the idea of uh, business travelers receiving visa on entry has been on for about last year or so. But this new one, uh, it, it's fantastic in the, in the, in line, in the line of uh, after the Africa Free Trade agreement, Area Agreement that's been signed. It's in that you know, space. But then it also raises the question, a series of questions really. So on the one hand, we've been having uh, security issues here in Nigeria. So what happens? How has that been factored in? How well or not that's been factored in is an issue we'd like to take a look at. And, so, and other people are saying, hey, you said everyone can come, but your borders are closed. Isn't that some form of contradiction? Well, we want to explore all of that this morning. We have joining us uh, to have this conversation. The, uh, first of all, let me let us know that we have the uh, controller of immigration boss. We'll be, we'll, we'll be introducing him shortly. But let's first of all let you know that we have Ambassador Dr. Gani Elawa, who is uh, the president of the Association of Foreign Relations Professionals of Nigeria. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. As well as uh, retired Colonel Tony Inyama, security expert. Thank you so much for joining us. First of all, let me take your, your, your perspective, uh, uh, Ambassador Lawa. When you heard this news, how did it come to you? Well, it's a very sharing news in the sense that uh, uh, it's part of the trajectory of enhancing free movement of people and trying to widen the scope of trade, you know, between and among uh, African nations. So it's a very shared news indeed. Although we have had series of uh, uh, a visa regime for different kind of countries, but now this is, this is a wider uh, platform, you know, to allow a large number of people to come in freely without much uh, hassle. So it's a very sharing, it's a welcome uh, development. 
do you share the same? Um, in the long term, welcoming. But the timing, I think it's something that um, to me seems not well thought of. And then also, there hasn't been the appropriate training of the CADA in immigration, in the intelligence to deal with this. Because this announcement came, first of all, as usual, abroad. There was no due consultation. When you talk of immigration in any country, there is usually a discussion which the people are consulted. And there are different levels. And I think this was not done. So it's another, I would say, uh, in terms of policy, there is a, a procedure for arriving at policy. You don't just make policy declaration and then force all the agencies to start working towards the objective. Now that you've raised you know, some of these issues, I think it's only fair to raise it with immigration. Sure. And we have joining us via phone of the Controller General of Nigeria Immigration Service, um, Sir Mohammed Babandeide, just to kind of clear the air and get reactions uh, to the questions you have raised. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the program. No, good morning. Uh, two issues I'd first like to raise. On one hand is the talk about training. Is immigration service ready for this influx? Because with this announcement means there's going to be major influx. So have your men and women been trained adequately? Factor in the fact that a lot of travelers will say when they come into the country, you know, they get harassed in court by officials who say, you know, what, give us tips and what have you. So how are you doing on the side of training? And two, did you adequately involve stakeholders? Because one of our guests just raised that. So we'd like you to respond to that first. Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, uh, now I am uh, talking on phone, so I'm sorry you cannot see me because I cannot join you on TV. But I would like to state that Mr. President gave approval long time ago, and he gave directives that first we must consult with the stakeholders. We must ensure that the visa regime for Africa that does not contravene security issues and must be submitted in a transparent way. So it is not just now Mr. President announced in, uh, in Egypt. No, he had given earlier approval, but gave directives that the implementation must not compromise national security, must be done in a transparent way, and it must be of great benefit to Nigeria. So I'm glad to say that we are aware of this approval and we have worked hard on it. We went on retreat on it in, Can in Lagos. Uh, we did our conference in uh, Benin City, and we discussed this, we finalized the document. Last two, two weeks, we did a consultative meeting of all stakeholders, including State Security Service, National Intelligence Agency, Airport Authority, uh, Civil Society, uh, uh, the military. We all involved them, because if you want to implement this huge issue, uh, the implication is great. Let me give you just one implication in the airport. Imagine an aircraft arrive from Africa, let's say an Egyptian airline or Ethiopian airline. It will come with a lot of Africans on board. And these people are going to collect their visa at the airport. So you need space in the airport. You need to increase your facilities in the airport. Uh, you need to be ready because you are not just clearing them. You are giving them visa on arrival. So all this is, has been put into consideration. Uh, we have consulted. We have trained our officers. Uh, on this because most of the challenges will now be at the point of entry, not at the embassies. So, but, and also we have to do it transparent way. We will make sure we avoid cash. <laughs> I had a story somewhere, somebody, uh, not, not, not channel television, but a print media wrote that we want to do visa on arrival and collect cash. It's not true. Mr. President said whatever you reform you are going to do must be transparent. And the transparency is that you remove contact between uh, citizens, applicants, and the service officers. So we are make sure it is done without uh, collecting cash. So we are really prepared on it. And I assure you, it is not the only reform we are doing. There will be an entire visa reform, uh, which will be uh, submitted to Nigerians uh, before the end of the year. A lot of reforms which will take care of our economy, which will acquire transparency, which will ensure that it is of great benefit to Africa. Uh, another thing is, uh, on one hand, when will this come into effect. We want an official 
uh, you know, response. And also, we understand that policies such as this have a time frame. So the visa on entry policy, is it for a 90-day period? Is it for a 30-day period? What's the duration for this visa on entry policy? This visa is only valid for people who are visiting us in Nigeria, who are coming to do business in Nigeria. It will not be valid for people who want to take residency and take up employment. Anybody who wants to take employment, it will be issued in our embassy after due clearance. So this means that all those fears people have in terms of employment, people coming to take up our job, what's really, it will not be there. Uh, but it will be for a period of the person's stay in Nigeria. If you are coming for a conference to spend seven days, we'll give you the seven days. If you are coming to visit a family, we'll give you the period for the seven, uh, the period you want to visit appropriately. So it will be based on need of the person, but it will not be over a period of 90 days. Remember our e-registration. If you stay for a period of 90 days, you must register. So we must not allow somebody to stay over a period of 90 days. For clarity, Mr. Babande, uh, kindly tell us which specific visas are involved here. There are different kinds of visas, I'm well aware. Uh, so maybe there are seven or nine different kinds of visas. So there is travel visa and, you know, all of that. Which specific visas does this uh, policy cover? About well, 70 choices. So there will be different choices. But let me give you one secret one which will come of great interest. Nigerian citizens who are Nigerian by birth and they had to renounce their citizenship to get citizenship of other countries, uh, because those countries don't accept dual citizenship. Let me give you an example nearby, just Germany, or India, or China. You are in Nigerian there, you have settled there, you have established, probably got married, give birth to children, you took the nationality of Germany. You cannot have German nationality and also have Nigerian nationality. This kind of categories of people, we will give them visa on arrival. And when they arrive at our port, we can give them visa to the validity of their stay uh, anytime they want. Even if they want the validity to period of their passport, it can be issued. So they have an option. You can see the revolution coming up to link our citizens who are Nigerians by birth, but they cannot be able to get Nigerian passport because of the nature of their nationality. Uh, this is just one of the 70 uh, visa regimes we are going to introduce. One of the issues that's also been raised by concerned stakeholders is that on the one hand, uh, Nigeria's borders are closed. On the other hand, it's visa on entry. So how are these policies uh, likely to work together you know, from January when the president says this policy will take effect? There is no contradiction. Our land borders are partially closed. I want Nigerians to ask, partially closed. Uh, when the border was, were closed, uh, initially, for one or two days, it was total closure. Human beings could not move, goods could not move. But Mr. President reduced the pressure on the system and allowed human beings to cross. I'm glad to state that, go to Semi, people are crossing. The only difference is that this time we insisted that persons, including our citizens, who want to enter or depart uh, Nigeria, must use recognized border control post. You can't pass through the bush pass. That is one. Secondly, you must pass with relevant travel document. Uh, it has to be the relevant travel document required, which means a course travel document or a national passport. Uh, and we restricted the movement from six to six in the land borders. So this is very clear. The Nigerian land borders are not totally closed. They are partially closed, and that partial opening is for human mobility. So there's no contradiction in it. All right, just before we let you go, we'd like to touch on the enhanced passport. It's been in the news. You have made some announcements about it. But still, some people say that they try to go through the appropriate means and then they are charged some extra. So what is the state of the enhanced passport? Where can people get it across the country? And what are you doing to ensure that some of those reports are dealt with decisively? Uh, first, I would like to clearly state that uh, corruption is not institutionalized. <laughs> this is very, very important. Uh, we are not institutionalizing corruption. All the officers who are involved in putting extra money to charge, we have been arrested, we have been prosecuted, we have been dismissing. A lot of issues are involved. So I'm not telling you that there is no that issue. But the major issue that affects uh, passport issues are scarcity issues, which is being resolved 
and uh, which is being domesticated, uh, we're handling that. But the new enhanced passport has been rolled out. We want to roll it gradually. I don't want Nigerians to expect it that we should change it overnight. If we change it overnight, it will affect our citizens who don't even have an embassy near them. Take somebody, that is, anywhere you go, you find a Nigerian. Iceland, that is a Nigerian. So if you say today you will change the old passport the same day, uh, or in a year, you have a problem. So we are gradually rolling out. We roll out first, uh, with the Mr. President launching it on the 15th of January uh, this year. Then we started with headquarters. We moved to Ikoi. We Kano. Uh, last week we are in uh, uh, in Alosa. Then before the December end, we want to be in London. So we are rolling gradually so that the pressure will not be much. And I'm telling you, we are reducing corruption, we are reducing contact with people by making it 10 years. You can take 10 years. Don't come back to us until after 10 years. That is one. We are encouraging people to pay online. Uh, and we are penalizing any officer who refuses to accept online payment. Well, if you pay online, you don't have a problem. Go to www.immigration.gov.ng. You will get online pay. Come with your favor. Don't carry cash. Sometimes you get the challenge, even more Nigerians. You want to travel tomorrow, you carry cash. Give me passport as urgent matter. You should remember that your passport can be renewed three months before the time. So we are doing all our best to reduce human contact. And the minister, the current minister of Interior, Rob Ogbeni, has a plan. We are working very closely to remove entirely contact between immigration officers and applicants, so that our passport offices will not have contact at all. Uh, with African, that will reduce corruption and will ensure that people get the value for money. Mohamed Babande, the Comptroller General of Nigeria Immigration Service, thank you so much for speaking with us. And we hope to host you very soon, as soon as you are in Abuja. Thank you so much for your time. Well, uh, Mr. Niam, uh, Colonel Niam, beg your pardon. Are you comforted? Sorry? Are your security concerns assuaged? Are you comforted? Um, see, we make one big mistake with all humility when in other dispensation when you have a visa regime change it's not an operator who should be speaking about it it's the policy maker which is government leadership it should have been a minister who should you don't he he's done his job and he, his language, if you were, he said the directives have been given. We're not talking about directive. We're not, we're not in a military barracks or in a, usually in a government. The government elects a people. And the policy makers is the one that should actually, he only takes directives. So that is his duty. But this is beyond him, with all respect. It has to do with policy making. And the president is the leader. He has made a declaration. I'm suggesting, saying that at the leadership level, it has not been well thought out. Because when you have visa on these three countries outside examples, Dubai, one of the ones that have been successful, Ethiopia, then Morocco to some extent, and of course, Rwanda, just recently, and Kenya. The issue is this. They are always tied to the, why I'm saying it is not, you see, we jump to very, it's, I'm sorry to say, the lack of capacity. It's not to do with visa, he's just to implement directives. It's always thought of, first, there has to be a vision. Dubai started it. One, it ties up with its vision to build a hub, Dubai, to be a place to maximize on transit. It ties up. I was about 20 or 30 years ago. I traveled to Dubai first when it was a silly village. Then you are allowed to stay in hotels, five-star hotels free. Well, doesn't this tie up with after, no, for no, example? No, no, no. What I'm trying to get at, I'm saying that there is no vision. You see, usually when you have this regime, it ties up with, are you trying to encourage tourism? Are you trying to, it has to be tied to national interest. Now, are you trying to encourage tourism? Are you trying, and also, there's also a consultation with the hospitality industry. You know, the three countries that have done it, it's barely to raise national interest. Dubai, Ethiopia, Ethiopia also ties up with national airlines. 
Dubai, Emirates did it, Emirates did it with the hotels in conjunction, and the government came in. Ethiopia did the same. Today, Ethiopia has the largest and one of the best airlines in Africa. So you think that this is not you know, tied to the appropriate stakeholders? It is. So that that it, I'm saying that, you see, we mix up policy making and what I call operational management. There's two differences. Right. And it, the issue, there's a failure of leadership in thinking things through. We can't just sit down and some president goes to uh, Egypt and makes a, such a fundamental announcement. But the announcement the president made was tied to trade. Ties to? Trade. Yes, ties to trade. But you see... And the, the, the plan to make Africa, to consolidate Africans, African nations as one body, as one economic block on its yes, own. Isn't yes, that a vision? No, no, no. It's not a vision. Whose vision is that? Is that the president's vision or... African trade, the, uh, the, but, the point I'm making is that what is our national interest? Other countries that have, have done, who are successful, tied it to building their industry. But let's not forget that Nigeria is a major player in Africa. 200 million people, yes. largest economy. Yes. It's only wise for such power to actually capitalize on the African region, over one billion people. But you know what? Let me let me speak with Ambassador Lawal because I I, I want to believe you're a proponent yeah. for you know ties and what have you. How does his perspective hit you? Yeah, uh, those perspectives are local because if you look at uh, uh, African Union, if you look at uh, the trends in uh, international trade and international relations, you'll find that uh, everybody is moving towards kind of uh, regionalism, free movement. We started with ECOWAS. Nigeria had uh, played the leadership role there, and it has been successful. And now we are moving to Africa in order to show the leadership that you know, God has endowed us with. If you find out that in most cases, most policies in Africa, if Nigeria does not move, it doesn't get off the table. So I really welcome the announcement of Mr. President. Well, the aspect of uh, you know uh, operationalization is what can also give me concern. So you agree with him on that? Yeah, the operationalization, yes, uh, it can give me some concern. But from what the director just said now, you will find that uh, they've done a lot of uh, training, a lot of. Uh, I wouldn't know uh, how many stakeholders they have involved, you know. But I believe that they've done a lot. But in uh, in the in my friend's uh, 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 argument that there are not enough stakeholders involved in terms of airline, hospitality industry. Those are the people who will benefit from this policy. But before we go to that angle, there, there is a data. According to the 2018 Africa Visa Openness Index, uh, that's on Quartz Africa, it says the average visa openness in Africa, 24% can get visa on arrival. 25% don't need visa, but there's still more than 50% of African countries who require visa before entry. So how, how unified is that? Yeah, you see, don't, don't forget that uh, there's always the nexus of push and pull. When a country like Nigeria, like you said, with that kind of a population, decides to go visa on arrival way, it's going to pull a lot of Africans because visa regime is reciprocal. So if you remember that, so whatever we do to your citizen, we expect you to do the same to our own citizen. Right. So these are the type of uh, uh, pool that that announcement is capable of uh, 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 engendering okay. in terms of uh, free movement of uh, people and free movement of goods and services okay. within Africa. All right. Well, there are many issues, many angles to this, but let's speak with an economist. He joins us from our studio in Kano, uh, Professor Garba Sheka of the Department of Economics, Bayero University, Kano. Thank you very much, Professor, for joining us uh, this morning. Uh, first of all, we'd like to get your perspective on the President's announcement that uh, visa on arrival is now open for all Africans with African passports you know, uh, coming into Nigeria. What's your take on it? Are you concerned or are you excited?
Well, thank you very much. Uh, well, actually, uh, this new policy is going to impact on the economy. I think it is a positive development. Many countries have actually uh, practiced this kind of regime. Kenya, Ethiopia, Jamaica, Cambodia, and many other countries have actually uh, uh, practiced this kind of system, and it worked for them, and I think it will also work for Nigeria. Uh, it will have a lot of uh, economic impacts on the economy, and uh, I think that is why uh, we will support it. First of all, you know, it is difficult now for any region to develop without integration. In fact, uh, that is why all the regions, the Asians, the Europeans, the Africans are coming together, integrating together. And this kind of uh, visa regime can enhance this kind of integration by making it very easy for uh, uh, people from member countries to actually have access to other countries easily without any serious bottleneck. And also, um, we, are, we have signed the free trade, Africa Free Trade Agreement. And of course, this will definitely complement that policy because uh, if there is free trade and there are restrictions to entry into countries, uh, that will not work very well. So if um, uh, this policy started, I mean, uh, definitely it will enhance the free trade. People from African countries can come to Nigeria easily can have access to Nigerian market, have access to uh, uh, Nigerian environment. I think that will also help. And then um, we have complained that intra-African trade is just less than 20%. And uh, we need to improve. The direction of trade from Africa is always to Europe, to Asia, and not to African countries. So now with this, uh, we hope that uh, the intra-African trade will improve because of this movement that uh, people will have access and uh, easily uh, come in without uh, any hitch or uh, many problems. And again, of course, one of the other important things that we look at from this perspective is the issue of tourism. Uh, visa restrictions usually scare away tourists, but with this, it becomes very easy and we expect to see a boom in our tourism industry uh, if the policy started. And again, of course, uh, if you put all this together, uh, we are very hopeful that uh, it may have an impact on economic growth of Nigeria. And of course, so, Professor uh, Sheka, uh, we will we'll continue this conversation in a little bit after these uh, commercials that we need to take. So please stay with us. The matter still at play is this issue of the new visa regime that's uh, making the news and uh, causing a lot of interest here and there. We still have our guests with us here. Um, Ambassador Dr. Ganila Wal is still with us, as well as uh, Colonel Tony Nyam, retired. As uh, We also have Professor Garba Sheka of the Department of Economics, Barrier University. Yeah, Professor Sheka, you have listed the fact that it's going to have gr a huge economic impact on Nigeria, and you have looked at the positives, which is a good thing. But then there are concerns that with this open visa, you know, this open uh, ended uh, consideration that the president has given, uh, the arguments here in the studio so far, well, from one of our guests, is that the process hasn't been really well thought through. Yet, as the president said, it kicks in in January. Are you concerned that, you know, this is going to be as, as helpful as you say it is, or you are, are we up to a rough start? Well, <clears throat> actually, you know, uh, we have listed the advantage, and of course there are going to be certain uh, problems if care is not taken. And to me, the way President announced it, we are in December already, around mid-December, and he promised that it's going to take off by January. And I think uh, probably there is need for some preparations by the Immigration Department in order to face the new regime, uh, you know, seriously. So I don't know, but we believe, uh, first of all, you know, the pre-entry visa is a situation where the immigration people will have enough time to screen uh, the visitors. 
But this time around, they say, well, on arrival, as soon as you just wish to come to Nigeria, you just get your ticket and your passport and you arrive in Nigeria and then you are given the visa uh, at the airport. Uh, one of the fears is that, uh, especially now that uh, African uh, countries are vulnerable to this, uh, you know, uh, issue of conflict, this issue of fundamentalist uh, and uh, visa uh, application, I mean visa, uh, pre-visa, pre-entry visa usually serve as a sort of screening point where this kind of elements may be detected. But if it is just on arrival, uh, there are certain you know, chances that these kind of people can have their way into Nigeria. And another thing, uh, economically, is that uh, we are already having serious problem uh, of unemployment. And we know mostly, especially down here in the north, around Kano, most of our neighbors, when they come, they assimilate. We don't even recognize. We can't be able to differentiate same religion, same language, and so on and so forth. So most of them take off the petty jobs that probably Nigerians may not take or feel they are so a little bit high to take, and they can take all the jobs. So if care is not taken, if we open off, and uh, I'm sure probably the policy may also hold at the land borders, uh, since it may not only be at the airport. So there may be a, a problem of this, our unemployment worsening, because uh, certainly it be that is just talking about legal entry with some time frame. Most of the uh, Africans who are from poor countries may enter and refuse to actually exit. And, you know, we have difficulties, uh, our immigration department are having difficulties in uh, sorting out illegal aliens and making them to go back to their country. So certainly we are skeptical about that. Probably that may worsen our unemployment situation. And uh, Again, um, we also feel probably those who come to Nigeria for a number of times within a month or within a week even may have problem. So uh, I think the government may not make a mistake of saying, well, all the visa to Africans should be uh, on entry, but uh, the pre-entry should also be considered so that those who come to Nigeria frequently for a number of times should be considered right from home and be given the chance to or open uh, this thing to come. So I think uh, certainly uh, if the, uh, I mean, the regime is hastened without proper uh, uh, arrangement and um, uh, uh, preparations, we may enter into problem that uh, we may come to regret later. All right. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Ambassador uh, Lawa. How do you react to this? Uh, the, from a policy perspective, uh, what is your take, given these concerns? I think uh, those concerns are genuine. But taking advantage of uh, the internet, it can be it can be surmounted. The uh, uh, visa regime at the entry port is not new to Nigeria. But the way it, uh, it was done in the past is that, first of all, you will make your application through the portal from your country and submit it online, and then you will get a ticket online, which you are bringing into Nigeria. By that, the immigration is already aware that you are on your way to Nigeria. So if there are security checks to be done about you, and they will have done it. So at that point, if you are a person of, uh, uh, of questionable character, and then you become inadmissible, you may be refused visa at the entry. But then the concerns he raised about employment. Well, the concern about uh, employment, the immigration director earlier said that those visa does not uh, uh, allow you to engage in any work or maybe recourse to any of our uh, welfare services here. It's just for you to be able to come here. But you know, we don't have a means of monitoring yeah, yeah, once we, they come we don't. in. Not, and, on, not uh, like uh, other uh, developed nations. That comes nation. to the security concern that uh, uh, he was uh, alluding to earlier, that there must be uh, uh, an open of our security architecture in order to be able to confront some of them. They are, they are, they, they are genuine problems. They are existential mm. problems. But we just have to uh, design a means of dealing with them. Because this uh, visa regime is, is not, it's, it's been on the table in AU for long. They have not been able to implement it. As I said, that uh, until Nigeria takes the bull by the horn, most African countries don't. Uh, 
But now, with Nigeria showing leadership in that area, you know, I think it's a very salutary move. And uh, we should uh, give it a, a, a try and a workability. Perhaps as a precursor to the single passport for Africa. Exactly. Maybe. You know, we already have single passport for ECOWAS now. So it could be a precursor to... And don't forget that there are some highways, you know, that are under construction. There's been the highway going from Lagos to OGS. I'm sure you are aware of that. There are, there's one going to Cameroon, you know. So <clears throat> all those things, you know, if you look at them together, uh, they are ways of uh, integrating uh, Africans, right. you know, to be able to deal, to trade, you know, to exchange, you know, among ourselves. So there's a dilemma here, Colonel. Yeah. Colonel mm -hmm. So there's the talk about opening up free trade, free movement. It worked for the EU, even though, you know, they have their concerns and issues now. So let's try that for Africa. And Nigeria should be at the forefront, naturally. Yeah. But then there's also the concern. You have raised a few of them. There's the security concerns and what have you. And I, know, I understand in Nigeria, they talk about enforcement. We don't have an ICE unit, for example, like what we have in the United States. So now this obviously seems to have come to stay. So what we need to look at is how to handle and manage it. So in the coming days and coming months, what things do you, need, do you think we need to put in place such that we don't lose out at the end of this? First of all, let me start by, there's too much wishful thinking rather than critical thinking um, from what I'm hearing. See, first of all, like I've told you, all the countries that successfully had targets, Rwanda here, they had targets. It was geared towards helping the people improving the life of the people. It is not just because OAU, AU is doing this, you just jump into it. You have to have your own national interest first. If, let me cite an example to show you that it's not well thought through. In other countries, when you start this kind of visa regime, first, you identify all the hotels, say in Lagos, that people would give addresses that would be recommended. We've not done that. And I tell you, because I have my eye and my ears around. There is no proper in-depth consultation within the immigration services. Ask the, he could say they have had conferences. It's not this, an issue of seminar. The people have not been trained. Secondly, like you said earlier, we don't have the technical infrastructure to detect if someone comes in and disappears. And we, have, we are a rich country in the midst of very poor other countries, this will give them a chance to come in. Because they come in with the entry, all right, I'm coming in for a, for a visit, trans, trans visitors, then they disappear. And we have, I, every time in Lekki or Kui, when I go to, when we you give people work, it's Kutonu. Mm. People, Nigerians here are unemployed. This is what I mean by policymakers look at all these things holistically. You don't just say, oh, it's a good thing, African trade, uh, it's, it's all that is all wishful thinking. You don't go into critical thinking and assess how this can, can be done. I would say with all my humility that the president was too rushed to make that statement. We've not done our homework well enough to take advantage of it. Otherwise, other people will take advantage of us, as always. So when do you think will have been the perfect time to start this? No, set up the motion. You see, when you want a policy implementation, you start a policy how you do every, put everything in place, which is, for example, the associations, the, the, the chambers of commerce should be brought in. They would bring out all the key hotels that if someone comes in, he feels in a form, I'm going to stay in this hotel. They are very variable hotels. You know, you do all that. No, I mean, those are things you can do without necessarily, you know, getting them beforehand. The hotels you can actually check on at the spot. Just Google no, them. No, 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 they no, 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 it's not done so. You have, the hotels have to be viable hotels that, you not just any hotel. You know, you, you see, if you go to, um, if you go to Addis Ababa, if you put any hotel, they will, they'll say no. Because you could disappear. Those hotels to have responsibility. You see, we need to think. And not, you see, I'm so sorry to say, my generation and this generation, we're too old, we're doing things in the old ways. And that's why we, everything is good. I would say, look at the way things, three banks, for example, how they run their affairs. You know that 
the need we need younger people who think critically, not wishful thinking. But Ambassador Lawal mentioned the internet. Apparently, he, he's no, up to no, date no, with the internet. No, no. But if you mention the internet, is the internet <laughs> been put in place? And so, is it a is it a problem, Colonel Nia? Is it a problem of infrastructure or policy? It is policy. Policy directs policy. That's why I said earlier that the interview we're doing. The best person who should be responding to your interview should have been the minister. But then one, one, there, there is a concern, even in the international community, where yeah. we checked out you know, a number of people who said, look, we heard this announcement, but there are no details. That's and, it. You know, they, uh, you know, inquiries have been made that at the it. presidency, but then they don't, really don't have you know, uh, details as yet. Uh, but then you heard the controller general say, look, this is not something new. It's something that's been on the, at, the, uh, at the table for a while. So is even it in Obasanjo's regime, even long before, but you see, that was why Obasanjo and Co were very careful. You see, there are a lot of implications. What, and now, the timing the, now is wrong for the, me because of the, the security situation we are in. It's that security situation that we would like you to address now. Yeah. How now it's already, it's not possible for the president to take back his word. The word is out there now. So what do we do, especially concerning Can I, Let this me correct security. you. No, the, the word is not there. The president can 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 slow down. It's not, it's what not will it. that do to the image of Nigeria? Pardon? What will that do to the image of Nigeria in Africa? Because I saw a lot of countries actually tweeted about it saying can this I, is a can, welcome can development. You do not because of image and lose the substance. The substance is we are in a day. You just seen 73 soldiers killed in your own news here just now. We in a, we're still in a security. First of all, to start with, no net worth traveler wants to come to a, a country which is as insecure, a country where human rights are being violated. You have to sort all that. So what, what I'm saying is that there's no rush to say an image. The point I'm saying is that it may allow people who don't want to come in to be, to create, especially when we are surrounded by fundamentals, as this prof said. But you also heard Ambassador Lawal here say that, look, if you register online, it's easy to identify who you are and be able to get... No, yeah, that's, see, that is it. That's the mistake. The mistake is this. There are two options in this visa on entry. For example, if you are a British going to US, you first of all apply online. They check you out. This one has no time. You, you land. We don't have no, 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 no. It's from your home country that you would have made yes. this request. No, this one doesn't say so. This one, you see, right now, the policy they are talking about is that any African can arrive no, without... No, no. There, with, there, 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 there is a procedure. It's on yes. the website of the Nigeria Immigration Service. Procedure. But let, let's very quickly go, go back to Kano. <laughs> it's, it's we not, have had a regime of visa on entry before now for some, you know, particular... Uh, visitors. Class of people. That's and business travelers. Yes, as well as business people. Yeah. And the process has always been, you first of all announce your intention online. The online portal will give you a pass, a paper that you will, that will accompany your passport when you get here. Is okay. that the same as the, yeah, the new policy? Exactly. Now? By the time you are online, the immigration have already seen all your particulars. But then the, the, the next they, check to be done will have been done. If they need to contact the embassy again, that who, who is this kind of person? Is he a wanted person? What is you understand what I'm saying? Okay. All the particulars are there to check. For instance, you, are, you will have put your national ID there. You will have put your passport there when you are. Uh, announcing your intention, all this will have been checked before you even arrive in Nigeria. So okay, is, let's that, say, is that what we'll just... That's not the policy that... Uh, that is the no, way... No, the, the policy... That's the way it has been practiced No, no, yes, parks. Ambassador, I yeah. agree with you. Yeah. The announcement is just announcing that. Announcement is like what is done in Kenya, Ethiopia now. Any African can arrive in Ethiopia or Morocco or Rwanda... That's the one they announced. So let's be, you see, let's talk clearly. It is for our own security. We shouldn't be talking in platitude. The point I'm making is that the policy just coming out now, the details are vague, 
and they are misleading. Maybe right? that is what we will now be we will now have to ask, you know, for from authorities just as yes, you say. Yes. But let's very quickly go to uh, Professor Shika in Kano one more time. Professor Shika, you've heard some of the concerns that are raised that have been raised by Colonel Inyam. Uh, are you as concerned, or do you still see a light at the end of the tunnel? And how soon will we get to the end of this tunnel? Yeah, <clears throat> well, actually, um, uh, certainly speaking, it's a welcome development. Uh, uh, to me, if Kenya, if Ethiopia can succeed in this policy, I don't see why Nigeria should not also succeed. But uh, I think the task, the animal's task, is uh, practically on the immigration department. Uh, they should uh, actually do away with all bottlenecks to ensure speedy dispensation because those countries that are practicing this kind of regime, there are a lot of delays. People spend hours in the airport waiting for the bidders to be given. Unlike the ones that are just given transit uh, visas given like in Egypt or something that is just taking some minutes. But in Kenya, I know I have been there once and I have seen how long it takes me to get that visa from morning till around 3 p.m. in the evening. So I think uh, that is the major task. And again, uh, I think it's worth giving trial. If I were the president, I would not just make a blanket. and I would just give it a trial for one year. If it works very well, we continue with it. Otherwise, we suspend it. And another thing is there should be reciprocity. You know, uh, we are doing it to our African uh, friends, so uh, we also expect that African countries should also relax visa conditions for Nigerians to visit their countries. Uh, if after one year, you know, countries are making it tight for our people to go into their country, then we should also review it and be selective, just like uh, India and other countries are. They are selective. They mention countries where, that they will have this kind of arrangement with, and other countries will apply through the former appropriate channels. But I think uh, the whole thing is at the end of the day, if it works very well, it is going to enhance the economic activities among the African countries, and it's going to improve the intra-African trade that we have uh, always been complaining that is very low. Africans are more interested in dealing or trading with uh, Europe or America or other Asian countries. So I think it's a welcome development if we follow it very carefully. We have to be very skeptical in the administration of the new regime. Well, uh, Professor Sheka, thanks very much for your opinion on this program today. And thank you for sharing your time with us. We've been speaking with Professor uh, Sheka, who is of the uh, Uni Bayero University in Kano. Thank you so much for your time. We're back in a moment. Please stay with us. It's our concluding moment now, but um, Kadi has some... Well, uh, on a final note, I, I know this is majorly about Nigeria, but also about Africa. And, you know, we've been talking about this brotherliness. Let's come together and make things work. But if you look around, for example, South Africa is planning to open a new border authority to curb migration by 2020 on one hand. Between Rwanda and Uganda, the border has been closed since March. And there are lots of pockets of other silent hostilities across the African region. So on a final note, and I'd like to begin with Ambassador Lawal, do you think Africa is ready for that coming together, working for the ultimate growth of the continent? Uh, well, there's no time that Africans are not ready to come together. Most of the problems we find in Africa are purely political. Political differences often lead to hostility, unnecessary hostility. Look at what is happening in uh, Sudan. You know, sometimes you don't allow common sense to prevail. You begin to take a uh, hard stance against your people and things like that. And if you listen to the speech of our president, he ended that speech by saying that a, a lot of conflict situation is part of the problems of Africa and that African countries should now re, uh, uh, direct resources you know, towards uh, ending some of these co conflict and hostilities among... I agree that uh, that's, that could be a problem, a, a hindrance, you know, in order to promote this policy. But the more they channel their energy into trying to drown some of these tensions right. and ending this conflict, I think it's a... Let us give it a, a chance. A let's give it a try. Okay. Although I agree that that is more job for our security uh, 
personnel in terms of civilians. So, so let's let's speak with the security uh, oh. expert also <laughs> on a final note. So what do you think? No, there's no security expert. Anybody who tells you. <laughs> the, the, every Nigerian is a security expert. Seriously, I'm for brotherliness and all that. But you see, you have to begin by, you have to take, we have so many youths unemployed in our country. And we must first deal with catering for them. If you've not catered for our youths, and you are talking of catering for Africa, it's just a dream, it's just a talk, it's just talk. I think that this policy, even though Basanjo has thought about it long before, it's a good policy, but you have to be practical. Practicality is that put the things that need to be put in place first before you rush to it. I think the president should shift the January. It will not, it will not work well. All right. Well, um, I guess that's, still, that's the much we can take. But before we go, I think Maupe has snippets of a mail we received this morning. Maupe. Uh, thank you, Ayo. We have this one from Olagunju. Uh, talking about the fate of teachers in Nigeria. It says, very good discussing a very critical issue such as medical brain drain currently bedev bedeviling the profession in Nigeria with its antecedent evils. Please, another critical matter I and many other Nigerians would be glad to see being discussed and giving great attention is uh, the treatment being given to teachers in Nigeria. I'm a teacher and I can confirm to you that the situation is worse. With time, the same trend being experienced in the medical sector shall be the case in the education sector as well. Nations who value education will come out with a format of professional exam which teachers will rush out. From the many quack and substandard private schools who pay BSc graduate teachers as low as 12,000 to 25,000 naira, or the state governments who pay their graduate teachers as low as 30,000 naira to 50,000 naira to a family man with kids. Even the federal government is not left out in this crime against humanity, paying a level eight step one officer graduate entry level officer 49,000 naira. Well, the mail does go on and on, but we get the point, and it's certainly something that we would definitely look into. We also got this one from Bashan Rungbenga Omolayole, uh, talking about um, um, the health sector. The government must overhaul the primary health care system in line with sustainable development goals of the United Nations that was established in 2015. The health-related goals uh, end up poverty, zero hunger, good health, and well-being education, gender equality, and women empowerment. You also say a framework for the actualization of these goals is available for a local government area and can be replicated in the remaining 773 local government areas. Well, these are the mails that we got this morning. We also got a number of tweets, but we cannot take that because we're totally out of time. We have to thank you for taking the time to pen your thoughts down and sending them to us. We will always take as many as we can. Thank you so much for watching Sunrise Daily today. I'm Maokwe Ugu Yusuf. And just before we go, I want to thank uh, Colonel, uh, retired Colonel Rutim, uh, Tony Nyam for your time this morning, as well as Ambassador Ganilawa. Thank you Welcome. so much for your time. And that's been the show today. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend. I'm nope. Ayo Makinde. Pardon me. And don't forget our YouTube channel <laughs> is there for you at Channels Television. Don't forget to subscribe. I am Kyrie Fukuli.